So glad to have you here in the house of the Lord this morning. I know you're all the way back from Massanutten, Virginia, uh, where our youth are on retreat this weekend. I could say um, that, that most all are well. Uh, there is a few injuries that, uh, thank goodness, that a lot of things look better in the morning. Uh, but uh, that they're having a good time. And I thank you for your thoughts and prayers. They're enjoying their time away on retreat. This weekend will be returning tomorrow. They left on Friday, uh, left with them, and then uh, they're coming back tomorrow morning sometime. Uh, so if you'll keep your, them in your thoughts and prayers, uh, I'm sure they would appreciate that. If you're visiting with us, once you know you're an honored guest, we're so glad to have you. Um, there is a welcome card in the pew in front of you. If you'll take a few moments to fill that out if you're visiting and just drop it in an offering box when you leave. We do offering boxes here also to where we collect our tithes and offerings. And hope the service will be a blessing to you and look forward to get to know you a little bit better. Uh, members, if you haven't filled it out, um, if, you, if you filled one out, that's fine. If you haven't or something has changed, uh, go ahead and fill one of those out and you can do the same as drop in the offering box. I have a few announcements. Normally, I know Stacy does that, but she's on retreat uh, with, with our group. Which, by the way, is 42, 42 total. On retreat this weekend. A um, couple things going on this week. Um, church council was postponed this past Tuesday, so this Tuesday at 7 o'clock will be our church council meeting. Uh, so if you're a committee chair um, or if you're the head of our, one of our, our ministries here at the church, we'd love to have you there. Uh, we're going to basically be planning out the church calendar. And so if you would come with that information, if the committee chair can't be there, someone else from the committee uh, could go in their place. So we appreciate that as well. So 7 o'clock, we'll meet in Brasco Hall and, and get to it. All right. Um, also, church business meeting will be next Sunday at 5 p.m. here in the sanctuary. So next Sunday is our um, business meeting. And I believe that's probably about it. There's a few things coming up um, in the coming month. Uh, in February, just for you to be aware of the mark your calendar, uh, you would just kind of pay attention to those things in the bulletin, and hope that you'll be able to participate in the life here at Rose of First Baptist Church. We're glad that you're here this morning. Good morning and welcome. Um, just like to uh, read some scripture for you this morning. Isaiah forty one ten. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. 
And they and the scripture also says after some time. So we don't know exactly when, just after some time. So he probably is still a little child, most likely when this happened. But they were following the star. And they brought him some gifts. Some gifts. Yeah, for the for Jesus, right? When he was young. So uh, they brought him some unusual gifts. So did y'all get some, or have you ever, you don't have to say what they all get when they went up that unusual gifts. Or maybe weird gifts. Have you ever gotten something you like, not sure what this is or how I'm going to use it? But in the South, we, we have a custom that we say, thank you, y'all. No matter what, you have to say thank you. Even if you got those socks or underwear for Christmas, I know all kids are excited about that. But we say thank you, y'all, when we get something. Well, I had some visitors from a far distance one time um, from a country called Romania. Anyone heard of Romania before? Yeah, anyone know where it is? No. It's in Europe, so you have to cross the Atlantic Ocean to get to that. And uh, it's in um, Eastern Europe. And so they came, and they shared with us in our church about their church and ministry and things that they did. But they brought gifts. And so they brought a lot of different things. Uh, one thing I remember they brought was these wooden spoons. And I'm not really sure why, other than that they made them by hand. And then the, the other thing that they brought me was this plate. Now, at first, I recognized it says Romanian, it's their country home, so I understood that, but I didn't really know what to do with it, I'll be honest, because it's kind of small. Did you really eat off of this plate? Yeah. Not very easily, right? Would you have much food on there? Yeah. It's kind of small. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know. Maybe throw a glass, a poster, I don't know. So I just kind of put it out like a decoration. Um, so I wasn't really sure. It was a little odd for me. I didn't really know other than to say thank you, right? I'm supposed to say thank you. I wanted to be thankful for what we get. Uh, and I was, because I knew it meant a lot to them. They brought this to me, and it says Romania on it, so something from their country they wanted to share. So the wise men, it says they came from a long distance, probably from a faraway land, and so they brought gifts. They brought gifts to Jesus. And after all, it was his birthday that they knew that he was born. And they had a bond. Yeah, so do you remember any of the gifts that they brought him? It was kind of unusual. Gold. Gold. All right, gold is one of them. Frankincense and myrrh. So gold is probably the easiest out of those <coughs> three to understand, isn't it? So I have some gold, I think, in my rings. We see gold. We kind of know what gold looks like. It's pretty, yeah, jewelry. It, it's nice. So it's certainly fit for a gift. And in that time, maybe for a king. So it made a lot of sense. Jesus was the king of the Jews. They were, he was called that. Um, and so they brought him that gift. And the other ones are a little unusual, though. The frankincense and myrrh are spices, and they were used during burial. So Jesus was just born, so not really something you probably would talk about at someone's birthday. Um, and so that was a little odd. But they were talking about, they wanted uh, to, to basically, uh, everyone would know that Jesus' purpose came to, to die for our sins. So uh, he was born to live and to love and to show us and teach us all about God. But he would die on the cross. And that's what Easter is all about. Yeah. But he didn't just die, did he? He came back to, to life. We'll talk about that more in Easter. For that reason, he's our Savior because he came back and defeated that. All right? So, gifts. Gifts. So, we're to be thankful for gifts, thankful for God for the gift of Jesus, and I'm thankful that God gives us what, what he gives us. He gives us all we need and more. Think about all that we have and how God has for us. So, let's give thanks to God this morning uh, for the judgment and the gifts that they brought to Dear God, help us to be thankful uh, for the things you provide for us, for how you are there for us, Lord. It's a small thing, and many times we might not really know or understand how you do things for us. Uh, but Lord, what we know, we know that you're there, we know uh, that you've done things for us before, and you've done things for other people. Uh, maybe our parents or grandparents or other people, we may not have experienced some of these things, and they have, and we will as we grow. Uh, but Lord, thank you for how you provided all that we need and so much more. And most importantly, um, that you sent Jesus, your son, to us. In Jesus' name, we thank you for all that you've done. All right, you can go back to your seats or we do have
nurseries this yeah. morning. We just don't have children's church. All right. Yeah. So we approach the throne of grace together, a time of prayer, drawing your attention to the insert for uh, prayers for the congregation and community. Um, one, I believe, is not on this list. I'm looking at the short I don't think so. Uh, the passing of Kenneth uh, Paul Sutton. Uh, this is a family member for Sandy Sutton and uh, Ruth um, Sasser as well. Uh, so just wanted to, to add that to our uh, list. It's actually Dale's brother, Sandy <coughs> Sandy's husband, Dale, his brother. Dale's brother, right, I'm sorry. Yes. It's a family, right. Family member for that family, yeah. The Dale side of the family. Right, right. Thank you. Um, there are others that are on hearts and minds, and uh, those that are recovering uh, from surgery, uh, several, unfortunately, with COVID, uh, is, is kind of running rampant right now. It's something like prayers for those. Um, and, and a good report. Uh, from, from some as well. The, the treatments are going well. So thank you for sharing this one with that. Let's look up these ones and others on our hearts and minds this morning as we approach the throne of grace together. Dear God, thank you for your goodness to us, for your provision of Jesus. Uh, Lord, for without him we do not have hope. Without him we we are just wandering around and, and ultimately we, we find an end to life and that's it. So Lord, I the eternal life that we will enjoy and the full and abundant life that we enjoy now in Christ. And Lord, we understand what it means to love and to care for one another. Lord, we care for these ones on this list, uh, these prayer lists, and, and those are on hearts and minds. And those that have lost loved ones in recent days, Lord, I do pray the comfort that only can come from Christ, that peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, I just pray for them as if they continue to uh, carry on knowing that their loved one will not be physically present. But Lord, we are thankful that we know that they are in your presence and that the time of, of struggle on this earth is over. So Lord, we give you thanks for those promises, those truths and your word, or those things that we can cling to, Lord, especially during those most difficult times. Lord, we praise you for these good reports of, of, of procedures working and recovery from illness. Lord, we just give you all the praise. Lord, knowing that you're working in our life. And uh, Lord, pray that uh, Lord, we would just make you known through these times of struggle and difficulty. Uh, Lord, never know who is listening and looking for hope. And Lord, those are times we can share why and the reason that we have hope. And that is Christ. We both come to worship you, uh, the one true God. We come to worship you in spirit and truth. And may it be pleasing in your sight. we sing our next song, um, I just wanted to extend um, an invitation to all of you, um, those of you that would like to join us um, in our choir group, our praise and worship team, um, we would love to have you. We meet on Wednesday evenings right after um, the conclusion of youth, and we have a lot of fun. It's a great group, and uh, we would be thrilled to see to extend that invitation to all of you. Please do not let skill set get in the way. Um, we all have different skill sets, but when we serve with our heart, the Lord uses us to uh, honor Him and glorify Him with our gifts and our talents. So, no matter the age, no matter whatever it may be, I'm just, we need to know that we welcome you. Please stand as we see the goodness of God.
younger men in a congregation would like to join. Um, hint, hint. The, the music ministry would love to have. Love to have. So now we're a little out of order. We, we had um, a wonderful Sunday last Sunday uh, celebrating uh, the ministry and life work, really, of Judy Lewis. And uh, well-deserved. Thank you for coming. Uh, wonderful attendance. Wonderful time of worship. And so I'm glad that we had time to do that. Um, so we're, we're essentially uh, looking at Epiphany a week later, but I think we'll, we'll be all right to do just that. Christmas hasn't been that far away. The church traditionally uh, observes Epiphany. This is the wise men coming uh, to visit Jesus uh, the Sunday after. So the Sunday after, essentially, Christmas. But anyways, here we are. We're looking at a familiar passage. Uh, it sounds a little bit like some passages because they were some of the passages we read during Advent. Um, so we're looking at Matthew's Gospel, the second chapter, and we're just going to look at two verses from their story, verse 10 and verse 11, which we're going to focus on this morning. The Word of God says, when they saw, this is of course the wise men, saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. May God add his richest blessing to the reading of his word this day. You can follow along with your insert in your bulletin. Passage I just read is there as well. And a few fill in the blanks for this morning. So it's kind of hard to believe because it's such a whirlwind experience. Uh, to go through the Christmas season or Advent, um, it seems like we, we spend so much time in preparation and then it, as quickly as that comes and goes. Uh, and it is somewhat shorter. Um, we have a little longer during the observance of, of Lent or Easter. And so we have a couple extra Sundays there for that. So Christmas does kind of come and go quickly. Um, probably why it was extended somewhat. Uh, with Epiphany, out of the next week at least. Um, so we're looking at, at this very familiar passage, and we're thinking of all that we just enjoyed in the holidays and Christmas, and uh, we talked about the manger scene and, and just that experience of Mary and Joseph, the hardship that they went through and, and getting to Bethlehem, and then Jesus being born in the midst of all that chaos, quite honestly. And so, joy to the world, uh, the Lord has come, is proclaimed. This morning, we're looking at those that followed. Scripture says sometime after, we don't really know. Um, what we do know, most likely, it was not in, in that manger. Like I said, it's kind of tradition that kind of brought it all together. It happens lots of times over time. And yes, it's okay. I, I won't be one of those that loses my mind if you keep the wise men around your at your uh, nativity scene. What a lot of people do is have them trailing somewhere off to the side shelf or in the distance, maybe. Um, but nonetheless, we, we kind of look at it all together. But the reality is, he probably was um, a little bit older. We're not really sure. But they did eventually catch up with him. And they presented him with gifts. And we're very familiar with gift giving. We're a gift giving culture. Um, we receive gifts through holidays and also uh, birthdays, special events, maybe a housewarming gift or just visiting someone or a, a neighbor's moved in. Uh, we do all sorts of gift giving, so we're, we're familiar with that business. And uh, the wise men uh, wanting to show uh, their affection uh, for Jesus, the coming of this king to the world. They wanted to spend time and to worship him. So they present him with these gifts. And these gifts have meaning. Like like most things in Scripture, uh, there's a meaning behind it. And so there, there's some purpose behind it. And uh, most of the time, or at least sometimes, when you give gifts, there's some purpose. There's some meaning behind it. Now, I know sometimes that purpose is, well, it's their birthday. i got to give them something. Um, you know, it's our anniversary. I can't forget that. I had the flowers or something. You know, we at least have to acknowledge that date. 
Um, but many times we spend some time. Some of you start maybe now even preparing for Christmas next year and buying gifts throughout the year. Some of you are crazy like that. And other of us, normal folks, uh, you know, wait to the last moment and run out uh, and see what we can find. Uh, but, but purpose, what is the purpose behind these gifts? Uh, if you've ever thought that. Well, there's a few things I think we might could say about these gifts. And we can look at those three gifts in particular this morning. Gold is the first one. Gold represented his sovereign dominion. And gold was presented to a king. Gold still has a lot of value today. Uh, you know, the, the more carrots you know, in your ring, the more valuable, the more expensive, of course, it is as well. And it was uh, the most precious, one of the most precious metals of that day. And it symbolized royalty. You know, kings would want to be flashy. They want to display their wealth for anyone that would come into their courts or could see them from a distance. So, you know, they would wear gold. They would put it around, you know, their, their palaces and things of that nature. So the wise men recognized that this baby uh, who was born was just no ordinary baby. He was king. King Jesus. King of the Jews. And Lord of Lords. And the wise men uh, did not come just to, to cuddle, as, as nice as it is, to cuddle a newborn baby. Uh, they came to worship him and to display that he was the special baby to be revered. There was a famous Baptist preacher, and uh, he took a trip to Washington, D.C., and he had an opportunity uh, to speak with the President of the United States. What opportunity that is. And he mentioned that he had heard he was visiting uh, the city and that the President said, um, uh, that's right, why, why don't you ride back uh, to Memphis with me on Air Force One? And so the preacher said, why, why President, that, that would be an honor. You know, how could you refuse such a thing? Not many have probably even been on it. You may have seen pictures of it and things like that. Uh, but not many could say that. So I said, well, there's a, a plane going today, so I'll arrange that. I'm willing to have you aboard. And you know what he did? He, he quickly made all these uh, hotel uh, reservations, bought, bought the preparations, the toothbrush, packed everything well. And he did those sorts of things because it's not every day that you receive an invitation like that. And, and later he thought, hmm. You know, I, I rearranged my schedule and did all that I could just so that I could go with the president on this, this uh, plane. And, you know, I did it because essentially he's, he's the president. But in my spiritual life, how prepared am I? What preparations am I making for the coming of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, uh, of Jesus coming back again? And he felt kind of ashamed that, you know, he just kind of let days and months pass by and not do much of anything other than just kind of going through the motions of, of what you ought to do. And maybe cracking the Bible open here or there to study, but really not making much other preparation. So what preparations are we making this day for the coming of Jesus? We also had uh, some spices in these gifts. Frankincense is the first one. Frankincense represents his sinless deity. So if gold was a gift of wealth, the frankincense was used to worship, to worship the king. And, uh, these wise men recognized uh, that this was no ordinary king. Uh, this was a king sent by God. He was to be blameless, sinless. So deserving of our worship. Matthew 2, 11 says, And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worship him. And they opened their treasures, they presented them to him, the gold, the frankincense, and myrrh. And there were so many uh, who do not give to the Lord the worship that he deserves. The Bible so clearly tells uh, his children that we are to worship the Lord, thy God, and serve him only. That comes from Deuteronomy. And so if Jesus is not the Lord God, then uh, it, what is what is he? Uh, it's just blasphemous what we're doing if he's not God, if he's not worthy of our worship. Only God is worthy of that. The scripture tells us to worship him alone. 
not other things, not material possessions or the dream house or whatever we might fill in the blank there. The wise men knew this baby was God and they fell down and worshipped him. Isaiah 9, 6 states clearly, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So you see, uh, Jesus was not only born a king, he was born God in the flesh. He was worthy of our worship because he was sinless, blameless. And that should be reason enough for us to come before his presence with joy and thanksgiving and to bow down before him and worship him. So we have gold for a king, the frankincense. To represent that he was of God and he was to be blameless, sinless. And then myrrh, his sacrificial death. The third gift the wise men brought was a, a valuable, it's kind of gum like, I'm trying to describe this is kind of hard, a uh, substance, and it was called myrrh. And it just sounds awkward just to say it. So it must have been an, an unusual substance to be presented, uh, particularly. To a child, but nonetheless it was. And it was also used in embalming the dead. So stop and think of significance. Bringing a child something that would be used to embalm the dead. And they did this, of course, because they wanted to recognize that this child was born. His purpose was to ultimately die, to go to the cross for our sin. So murder was also used as kind of a narcotic to dull the pain. So you might recognize this from the Gospels in Mark uh, chapter 15 tells us, and they bring him unto the place of Golgotha, which is called, uh, which is being interpreted the place of the skull, and they gave him to drink wine uh, mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. So there's another foreshadowing of the cross there, actually mentioned in another gospel, uh, myrrh was used kind of as a, a deadening of, of a painkiller type sense. So Jesus was offered that. And Jesus being that, that humble, sacrificial servant, sacrificial lamb that came to take away the sins of the world. His purpose was to die. Uh, so he did not even take, take that, but was offered to him in myrrh. So we have these three gifts, and we kind of see why maybe they gave them those gifts. You know, we're on this side of things. Now imagine for Mary and Joseph, they might have thought these were crazy guys, you know, that maybe spent too much time out in the wilderness. Uh, you know, they were following a star, and, um, you know, you're, you're kind of protective of your children. I think they probably were back then. We are now. I don't think things have changed. Uh, so, you know, they, they might have had some reservations. Uh, think about all these visitors coming to see Jesus. Um, you know, now we're, we're kind of like, okay, just kind of be a little careful with them and, you know, make sure you're not sick and things like that. You know, I don't know. You kind of imagine how all this would go. Um, and just the tumultuous life that he lived and the time that he lived, uh, that the, the Jews were experiencing great persecution. And, and so... They've been through a lot, and they were really desperately looking for a Savior, and that was in Christ Jesus. So, this is the experience of the wise men coming to Mary and Joseph. But what about us? What about us? What does this kind of mean to us? You know, thinking of this new year and thinking about what Jesus has done for us. So, I, I kind of did a little reflection on your insert this morning. And I looked at these gifts, and I looked at them kind of individually and said, you know, because of his sovereign dominion, because of the goal, you know, the, what we kind of looked at as a purpose of, of that goal, would you be willing to give him your wealth? Gold is precious. It's, 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 it can be used to bless many or a few um, and that's kind of how wealth works. You know, it's kind of up to you uh, to be giving, to be generous with what God has blessed you with. 
Have you been blessed to be a blessing to others, or, or are you hoarding that? And then I looked at his sinless deity. Of course, that was um, in frankincense, the purpose of that. And would we be willing to give him our worship? Our worship is using worship. You know, what time are we spending in worship? Is it only this this hour that we give him once a week? Or is your life a, a life of worship? And do you worship God throughout the day? Do you thank him uh, for those blessings? Do you let him know your concerns? Uh, prayer is not just something we have to do inside uh, the church building. We can we can pray to God. We can seek his, his throne of grace anywhere that we're at. So we give him your worship. And lastly, looking at Murder and that sacrificial death. But you'll be willing to give him your witness. Your witness. It should be our purpose to let the whole world know about Jesus. Christmas is a great time to do that. Easter, of course, is another opportunity. The world seems to kind of stop and focus on uh, these these times of year. We have a chance to share the meaning, the purpose, the reason behind them. But do you personally share your witness? What is your witness like? There are things you need to work on in the new year. We talk about New Year's resolutions. So working on our witness. Working on confessing those things to God. It's okay. We're not all, actually, we're not, none of us are perfect. Only, only Jesus was perfect. So we might as well just own up to that. But, but we need to allow ourselves to grow in the, his likeness and his character. And just own up to those wrongs, those things we do. And allow God to have his way with us. So your wealth, your worship, and your witness. How will God use you in this new year, in 2024? There's lots of excitement. I have lots of excitement around what God is doing here at Rosewood First Baptist in this community. Uh, leaders are gathering. We're praying together. Uh, teachers in the community are, are praying together, excited about what God is doing, we're, we're coming together to help each other out. Uh, there's less of, of a dividing line I see, less of denominationalism and things of that nature. I see just community leaders and church leaders coming together for, for one purpose, and that's to honor God and to make Jesus' name known. So will you be a part of that? Will you be a part of that? Will you help us in maybe one of these ways? You know, maybe in sharing uh, of your wealth, or maybe giving of your time in a worshipful way, or maybe in, in a, a witness, and in, in, in being a part actually there at, at some of these outreach opportunities and things going on right here in Rosewood. So I ask God to have your way with you, and I pray the Holy Spirit would just speak to you this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, thank you for the reminder of the wise men, the strangers, the Travelers from afar, though they traveled, we don't even know how long, looking for the Messiah, the King. Lord, they just wanted to, to have a chance to look at him, but also to worship him, to share a little of what they had with him, and to offer themselves to him. So, Lord, we, we're still doing that today. We're still on this side of things, understanding a little differently, but we're still here Wanting to share of our wealth, Lord. Lord, have your way with us in that. Lord, help us to release the strongholds of, of worrying about things financially. And, and Lord, just give them to you. Allow you to speak to us. Help us to direct us to, to give of those things that would be kingdom building and growing. Eternal things. Lord, as we worship you, we're here to do that today. But Lord, it's our life. It's the things that we do and say even... When people aren't around, Lord, that's our worship, too. So, Lord, how we treat one another, the words that we say. Lord, I pray our worship will be pleasing to you in all things. And, Lord, our witness, so important that we share. How will they know, Scripture says, if, if someone doesn't tell them? So may we be the hands and feet of Christ as we go out into this community and to the world to share that good news. So we pray all these things. We ask that your spirit would just move in us in such a way, stir in us in such a way to action, that we might be better servants and better stewards of the things you bless us with. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Probably don't want to receive any today. Feel the Lord place it upon your heart to make a decision today, whatever that might be. Maybe that's a church family or home in this new year. Maybe that's to make a decision for Christ. Never solidified that in your life. For me, the Holy Spirit is leading you to make another decision. Today, I think I'll come to class and pray with you. Stand and sing this closing song. Seems in this new year. Oh, get this drink. <laughs> they can have an That we have a couple that has come to this area, familiar with this area, and uh, is excited about being engaged in ministry and serving in this community. So I'm going to introduce them to you. They would like to come and uh, be a part of our church family. So Richard and Luann Blue have been coming. You probably noticed they've been over here to the side, but um, I noticed uh, some of you all being able to come in and share with them. Just a, a word of welcome and uh, encouraging them to keep coming back. And they've been here during the Advent season, and I've had time to talk with them as well. And uh, they feel like God's just leading them to, to be here, even though you know I don't think they've been in the area, back in the area quite very long, but they want to get involved and Go ahead and start on this journey the right way, I think, with being a part of the church family. So, uh, if you would have them, and I feel like you probably will, um, I, I make a motion uh, that we receive them um, into our uh, church family and membership. Do I have... Uh, Second. 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 All, right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I don't hear any. Well, welcome. <laughs> serving alongside of you and helping you grow as you help us grow. So if you would stand, and we'll close with the word of prayer, and I'll have them join me at the door, and then you can greet them and say a word of a welcome to Rosewood First Baptist Church. Let's go to the word of prayer. So Lord, thank you for being with us this morning, for speaking to our hearts. 
Lord, for the guidance that you provide in our lives, Lord. And Lord, if we're just open and willing to receive what you have for us, Lord, what what a, a difference that will make in our lives, the difference it will make in the lives of people around us. Lord, if we're only willing to share uh, of our wealth and our worship and our witness, Lord, as we just being open to following your Spirit's guidance, Lord, as we journey on this faith journey together, Lord, as we seek your, your will and your way for us, Lord, we, we thank you for the Blue family. And we just ask that you bless them and you just help them and encourage them as we uh, seek to encourage them and they seek, I pray, to encourage us and help us uh, to grow more in your likeness. In Jesus' name.